Louisa is my name. Welcome to my video if you haven't joined me before. Um, I'm making little videos to describe some of the things I've learned. It seems a quicker way to teach than to write or teach in person, obviously, in our global times with the internet. You might as well use this amazing thing that we have, this tool. So these are my offerings. Um, and today I'm making a video that's a sister video to one that I just made on forgiveness. So I made this video um, on forgiveness at the cusp of the new year, so just before the new year for 2020. And um, it was a very general understanding of forgiveness and looking at some new ways to express the idea of forgiveness that would be a little more liberating and perhaps resonate with people more than the word forgiveness. Um, but after I made the video I was mindful that I felt like I'd really missed some important things. For those of you who have experienced um, situations of abuse, For those of you who've experienced situations of abuse or severe mistreatment, you will have perhaps different language for, for these things, but perhaps the words abuse and mistreatment are triggers for you to relate to what I'm going to be speaking of. I feel that <clears throat> these concepts deserve a deeper video, um, one that presents more of a how to forgive rather than just a presentation on what it means to forgive and the value of forgiving. Because I understand that this is this is the crux of um, some of the deep inner conflicts that we each hold while we are incarnated on this planet, that we've been deeply hurt, deeply wounded, um, and it's really challenging work. Abuse, especially when it was a betrayal of power, an abuse of power by somebody that profane to love you, proclaim to love you. There's a Freudian slip, <laughs> profanity, profane. By someone that pro proclaimed to love you. That kind of hurt, that kind of abuse is one of the deepest wounds in my opinion. And as many of you watching will know, you may still be carrying that wound and you'll know that it isn't just a matter of simply snapping your fingers and letting it go or moving on. Yet, if you can work through this process, you will not only liberate yourself, you'll also liberate the planet from the story of abuse because your story of abuse is mirrored in the collective story of abuse on this planet that in some senses all human beings have experienced abuse. And if it wasn't on the, in this lifetime, it was in previous lifetimes. It's been part of the great human drama that has been going on for millennia. As well, there are abuses happening interdimensionally, let's say, with um, beings that have come here over again millennia and have sought to control and manipulate through lies, deception and essentially harvesting the negative emotions of human beings. Uh, and similarly, we have enacted, as a human race, we've enacted abuses on our brethren, brothers and sisters. There's been, of course, wars and uh, terrible atrocities that we can all remember even, even in one generation's time on this planet. Um, and then there are abuses which some don't even think of, it, of abuses, such as the way we abuse our animal brothers and sisters. Uh, through factory farming or the abuse of our natural environment. So abuse has been a part of the template that we've all lived with, the matrix, um, this kind of shared reality bubble that we all share. Uh, and now it's time to end that story and it's time to rise in frequency collectively, each person doing it on their own. But as the numbers grow and grow, so too does our reality change, our collective reality changes. So it's a really alchemical and magical process that's going on right now. So I wanted to talk more deeply about how to actually resolve this abuse and to forgive not only the perpetrator of the abuse in your life, but also yourself, because as I'm going to explain, 
there's actually an element of self-forgiveness required with abusive situations. So there's three stages and the first one is, is an odd one that you may not have thought of before if you haven't delved deeply into your own feelings about your abuse. Um, but abuse is accompanied by a mental or a psychological component that results in somebody feeling deep, deep levels of shame and self-hatred, humiliation. So the, the shame and the humiliation give rise to the self-hatred, the self-loathing even. Some very strong words might be present with this emotion. It's, I, I see these kinds of emotions almost like the, as the cesspit, the very bottom of where a human being can go with their emotions. Um, and I haven't experienced overt abuse that one would kind of go, oh my God, that's terrible. And yet I can still relate to these emotions because I think we all can. I think we've either experienced it in this life or we've experienced it in other lives. So, you know, pain is pain and regardless of the story, it, I don't think it serves us to compare abuses. Um, so if you resonate with something that's happened to you that you would call abuse or you feel was so shaming and so damning to your sense of self, then watch this, it applies to you, right? It's relative, I guess is what I'm saying with abuse. Don't judge abuse by some textbook definition that you get on the internet that says, you know, it has to be this many times perpetrated in this way or, um, or this is worse or this is better than that. No, it, it, it really is entirely up to you and how you respond because each of us is unique and our threshold for abuse will be really different. You know, some people can, can handle um, psychological abuse, for example, which is the most subtle form of abuse. They can handle that quite resiliently. They can kind of not take it on board necessarily um, and find their way out of that with a healthy sense of self-esteem. But for a lot of us, and, and this was where, where my story um, is a part of this, I, I, I couldn't handle that. I, I was unable to. I didn't have um, an inner sense of self that I could fall back on to tell me it was going to be okay. So I internalized a lot of negative messages about who I was. And I believe I didn't so much accumulate those in this life, I accumula accumulated those in past lives. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> I guess the point is it doesn't matter so much where it comes from with this first stage. It's more about acknowledging the feelings that you have. So the first stage is understanding that some of these feelings will be turned against you. Um, acknowledging that you might be very angry with yourself. You might feel deeply ashamed. And I want to share with you a picture now that I drew um, when I was going through my recovery work. And it just shows, I guess, <clears throat> it's very visceral drawing and that's why I wanted to show it because I feel like pictures tell a thousand words sometimes. Um, and as I wrote there, this is how it feels to, and then the story of my abuse, which I've just um, eliminated there so as not to make it too personal. I feel rejected and abandoned. I want to kill myself, this horrible thing that has been rejected. So you can see there how the feelings of anger were turned against me and I described myself as a horrible thing for being rejected. So let's say the abuse is rejection. Um, now, you know, rejection at a party when someone doesn't want to talk to you is not abuse, but rejection by your tribe, rejection by your family, rejection by a beloved, rejection by people who, who really ought to care about you and have your best interests at heart, that is, um, if you don't call it abuse, you might call it mistreatment or an assault on the sense of self, an attack on the sense of self. Whatever word you want to describe, it's deeply wounding and that's the point. So um, the, then what can happen is it will turn on you. I'm, I must have deserved this for some reason. So understanding this is the first stage, seeing how you've turned it against yourself. Um, it's well known in 
some of the more researched fields of abuse, such as sexual abuse, sexual assault, that the victim will take on the anger and shame for themselves and will blame themselves. So confronting this, these emotions is important. It's, it's about feeling them. Um, I don't think you have to feel them ad infinitum, infinitum forever, but you know, it could be a process. It could take you a while because they're going to cycle up into your awareness to be acknowledged, validated and released. So it might take you several years. Um, you know, it depends. We are, I think, being supported at this time on our planet to actually move through these things quite quickly. And it depends where you already are in that journey. Um, but I know for myself, at any rate, it did take probably five or six years of quite intensive work on unraveling that shame. Um, so the first thing is seeing it. And the second part to that is understanding where that comes from, re recognizing that it's an inherent human uh, trait that we will turn the anger on ourselves and that as it's a kind of a part of the victim consciousness if you like um, and if you've been victimized that's probably what you will have inherited from the experiences of victim consciousness I have been wounded I am a victim right there's nothing wrong with that that's as it is natural however we don't want to get stuck in victim consciousness because it's really damaging for ourselves and we can perpetuate patterns that continue to keep us in a victim consciousness, that attract people into our lives, that perpetuate that victim consciousness, that take away our power, that invalidate us, that continue to erode that sense of self. So it's super important to, to stop it through your awareness, to stop perpetuating the victim consciousness through your simple awareness that it exists. Oh. I am enacting that anger at myself again because of my history of abuse. So just catching yourself. Now the next stage is to then turn those feelings, predominantly the anger, because it's the anger is the, the thing that will give you that sense of control, to turn that anger to the people who hurt you. To th This is an interim stage, right? I'm not suggesting you stay stuck in anger either or blame. But what I want to do is acknowledge the feelings that sit there, these really strong feelings. They are, they are raw, they are primal, they exist within us. There's a part of you that will be enraged at the people that hurt you. So, you know, it can take a lot of digging to find this part because, again, we've been taught to forgive and forget, to let go, to um, that it's 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 not okay to blame others there can be a whole lot of like spiritual um, doctrine around the idea of healing from a trauma like this that in in a sense negates the feelings that just sit under there the raw pure feelings and when you're going through the stage I want you to be like a child <laughs> okay I want you to actually just allow yourself to purely feel your feelings this will be for the most part private work that you can do completely alone um, it's about, you know, I know for myself, I would go in and imagine um, really hurting the person that had hurt me, really hurting them, letting my imagination just go to town with that. Um, so, you know, you can, you can go there in your mind if that's where the energy lies within you because you're just releasing it. Um, you know, I think you'll know the difference if that starts to tip into some kind of obsession with actually hurting another person or... Um, or becomes a negative thing in itself. Um, I think for the most part, if you, if you allow these things, then they will be released naturally. The anger will blow off eventually and there will be then space, you see. This is what you're trying to create within yourself is a sense of spaciousness. These angry emotions, whether they're at yourself or another person, will sit in your energy field and block they're blocking the good stuff. They're blocking the beautiful light and the love that is accessible to you. That is actually your birthright. Um, trauma and abuse creates a kind of a covering over the energetic field. Um, it, you know, I suppose that's the great sadness of it, that it, um, in a sense, it, 
robs you, although that's, that's a strong word because it implies it takes it away forever, but you can, never, you can never take away your birthright to happiness, your birthright to freedom, to liberation, to sovereignty, to peace, to creating anything you want. You can't, no one can take that away from you. All that can happen is it'll get covered over with these beliefs and programming and indoctrination that you are not good enough and that you deserve this somehow or that other people are all to blame. So this is, as I said, a stage. Stage one is understanding how you feel about yourself and the anger you're carrying towards yourself. Stage two is acknowledging how you feel about other people. Now we do not want to get stuck in stage two either because that leads to bitterness. That leads to people who, you know, will spend years and years and years going over and over the tragedy of their story and never actually moving past it. Because what they're waiting for, in a sense, is that person that hurt them to come and admit that they're sorry. Um, and that is giving away your power. If you are waiting for somebody else to say sorry, then you're giving away your power. It might happen. Wonderful if it does. If, if your persecutor or person that hurt you apologizes sincerely deeply I think that's one of the most beautiful moments you can have in this whole drama but it's it's not guaranteed and I I don't know many people for, for whom that's happened you know usually we have to forgive the person without an apology without a sorry this is really hard work it's high level emotional work so don't wait for a sorry um, because then again you're giving away your power the forgiveness is something that's generated from within you. It's all within your power to forgive, to forgive yourself and to forgive the other. And as I mentioned in my other video, I prefer the language, I release you from my anger. Uh, yeah, so you can play around with the different terminology. Um, so the stage three, So the stage three, um, the feelings are there to be felt and again this is not linear, it's not going to just happen stage one, stage two, stage three, but something that you work on all the time throughout this process is creating a powerful story about what happened to you. You could also say retelling your story. Because chances are, if you, when you begin this work, the story that you've been telling about what happened to you is not an empowering story. It's a story of how you were victimized, how this terrible thing happened. Um, perhaps it's a story that you've only ever told yourself because you've never dared to admit it to anyone else. It's a story that hasn't even got words. But this story, if you do articulate it, But the story, if you do articulate it, will contain a lot of shame and a lot of victim consciousness. It will be how you were powerless and helpless um, and how somebody else did you wrong. Now, while that is true on a limit on a, a limited level, like um, things that I, I don't see things, when I say level, I don't really mean below, middle, upper. I'm more talking about constriction versus expansion so let's say if you can see your reality through a little tiny hole that would be the limited perspective that you have that you were abused that was your story right but as you open up that portal and you begin to see a wider vision it becomes more and more expanded With each level of expansion, the story has to change, right? So as you're retelling your story, what you're looking for is you're trying to engage your higher mind. So not limited egoic mind where I am separate from the universe and I am experiencing victimization. 
But higher mind is that larger mind that you possess, that you can tune into and tap into, that has a higher knowledge, that can see things from a higher perspective or a more expanded perspective. That's the, that's the new story. You're going to go into that realm and create a new story from that place. Now, of course, I can't give you a story. You have to create it yourself. This is the alchemy. This is recreating, retelling. Um, you do see this, just to give you a, a concrete example, you see it a fair bit with um, people who've come out of a terribly traumatic situation and they call themselves a survivor. So that's, a, that's one level of expansion going from small to, to bit bigger, to say, I'm a survivor. So I got through this and I'm, I have strength and I've been empowered by this and it's made me who I am today. Um, so you can see the big difference between I'm a victim to I'm a survivor. Now an even higher level than that would be I'm a creator. I didn't just survive that, but I actually create my reality. Now this is a, this is a really expanded view because as I alluded to in my other video on forgiveness, at the highest level we've all chosen our lives here, our circumstances, what we were meant to go through. And even if we took a deviation from our destiny, which is not absolute, you know, we do we have we live in a in a world of free will here, but we still have free will because our oversoul, our higher self I should say, has we created this before we were even born. We elected basically what was going to happen, the patterns, the key moments that would fuel our growth. And it's kind of like, we're kind of two people, we're, we're, the, we're the avatar, we're the body, and then we're also our higher, higher self, right? So we have to think multidimensionally, we are both of these, and our higher self is always assisting us. And if we haven't quite learned whatever lesson we need to learn, higher self will assist us to move deeper into that lesson. Um, and it's all part of an agreement. It's not set in stone. It doesn't happen exactly in a certain way. The universe isn't like that. The universe is organic and is constantly evolving and renewing itself and is always changing and always different. And yet there is also perfect divine order to everything. There can never be anything but. So whatever it is that was there for you in this lifetime, that is the best thing for you. That is what contains the greatest growth for you. So part of your retelling of the story will be to find the gift. What was it that you've learned? What was it, was it learning a whole new thing about how to, to exist in this world or how to care for yourself or how to self love or it, there'll be some gift. Was it perhaps an opportunity to, to resolve some trauma? that you've had again and again and again in your life and maybe the lifetimes before what was the gift it will be in there somewhere there's always a gift maybe it, you know matt khan speaks so beautifully about this about the heart being broken but not just broken broken open sometimes these terrible terrible things that happen to people create the biggest heart opening the most enlightened state can come from these challenges these sufferings and if you view um, a lot of material by quantum hypnosis therapists or past life regression therapists like Dolores Cannon there's many others always the higher self will explain that the greatest growth comes from the challenges so how, how can you tell your story so that there is the greatest growth? How can you reframe it to turn it into something that's not only honorable, but deeply valuable, essential, critical, vital, worthy of your existence, your beautiful, special being that you are? How can you do that? That is where the creator part comes in. Victim, survivor, creator. You get to tell the story and you get to tell it in a way that elevates you to the victor, the victor, really, to the sovereign being that you are. So those are the stages. Feeling your feelings about yourself, feeling your feelings towards others and retelling the story. Now, there could, I guess, be 
this probably is a fourth stage. Sorry, guys. I always, I never quite know how many stages there's going to be until I start talking. But um, let's just say the fourth stage would be uh, ceremonial releasing. Okay, well, I'm just calling it that off the top of my head. Ceremonial releasing. Finding ways to let it go. Now, this is the let it go part, right? Which is, it's, you can't just let it go until you've done the other work. We have to go through a myriad of feelings. We have to go through that raging anger. We have to go through the grief, the loss, the sense of tragedy. I lost my childhood or I lost 20 years of my marriage to that idiot or whatever it was that you lost. There's always going to be a sense of loss. So go through the anger, go through the grief, retell the story so that it becomes more and more expanded. And when you're ready, you'll start to ceremoniously release the story. It's a way of basically, because remember this experience has been so much a big part of your life. It's almost become automatic. You know, when someone says to you, oh, what was your life like? This is what you think of. So how can you now liberate yourself from it? And you have to do this through, through constant awareness and working on it in these these ways, ceremonial ways. Now, you, for you, a ceremony might be something entirely internal. It might be as simple as feeling that sense of I was a victim and I was abused, the emotional charge with it, taking in a big breath and letting it out, letting out that story. That might be your ceremony. It might be really simple. Um, it could be a affirmation, incantation, prayer, um, request for assistance. So when I was going through my work, I was helped by Andrew Martin. Bless him, he's amazing. I'll put his link down below. Um, he gave me a beautiful um, mantra, I suppose to say, whenever I was struggling with wanting to release this old story. So it was, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to see this from a higher perspective. I cannot do this alone. So I ask my higher self to do it for me. I choose peace or I choose love or I choose forgiveness, whatever it is that you want to create. So that's a powerful one. I also have written here, I was going through my um, recovery diaries for this video I wanted to find that picture I showed you earlier and I found this prayer of forgiveness which I thought was quite beautiful um, so this is when you're really working to forgive somebody else um, so what you do you can close your eyes when you say this and um, imagine the person that you're trying to forgive really small in the palm of your hand it's um, it's a nice way of provoking, cultivating compassion for that person. So, and, and you see them, you know, curled up in a vulnerable position maybe because even the worst villains on the planet have to go to sleep curled up, right? Like we all curl up when we go to sleep sometimes or when we're feeling really vulnerable. So imagine the person like that. I hold you in my hand and my heart. I see you cloaked in light. I see your radiant eternal perfection. I respect your divine power. I wish you well. I release you from my anger, my expectations and judgments. I ask to forgive and be forgiven. So I'll post these down below written. You can modify them as you like. You've got to, with this work, find the right words for you. I encourage you even more than using my words to completely write your own ones. <laughs> Um, so yeah because it has to feel just right um, so those are some affirmations you can also do some more literal ceremonial work so if that's something that you know a bit about or you could even just you know intuitively be guided um, you know a few times a year I often do letting go ceremonies so um, simple ways to do it is to write things on pieces of paper that you want to let go of and then to burn them or bury them or let a water a water stream take them away um, 
you can write in chalk on rocks and stones and put those in the water and let the water dissolve. Um, you can do a lot of this stuff in your own journeying within, so through meditation work. Um, you can bring in white light uh, to, to heal. You can imagine yourself bathing under the most beautiful golden white light that is just washing away all of these old stories from your timeline. Remember, it's your timeline. This is your reality bubble you're working with. And when you do this work, yes, you have an amazing effect on the rest of us. You really assist humanity to help to heal itself. And you really assist that other person to go on their way and to fulfill their next stage of growth, whoever you're forgiving. So it's powerful work. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's for you. So, so enjoy it in an intuitive way. And know that the peace that you can acquire through this work is is being rich being rich in this universe is to be at peace you know i know i came here for that i came here to literally go through these experiences myself so that i could then teach them and to cultivate the peace and the light and the love inside my body this crystalline vessel that carries me around and be an anchor for that on the planet. And there are lots and lots and lots of us who are here to do that work right now, who are doing it. And through that collective healing, um, we are bringing in the vibrations of compassion and forgiveness and love for each other in a way that the planet has never seen. And for those cynics out there who thought that, you know, like the John Lennon song, imagine Imagining a world that was pure love and light for cynics who think that's not possible. It's already here. It's already here for a lot of people on the planet. And we are doing it. We're creating it. And, uh, you know, it wasn't possible before. Yes, it's, there, there was only a few avatars, people in the world that were able to hold this amount of light in the histories gone by. So we have our Jesus Christ and our Buddhas and our Mother Teresa's and our many, many other people on the planet and lots of people that were never named and known. But they were few and now we're many and the difference is the time. The time is right. The time is now. The information is coming in, in its divine, perfect timing. And we're here to ascend. We're here to do this incredible, magical transformation on this planet, this beautiful planet that we've come here to live on. So take heart and faith that your work is possible, that forgiveness is possible. Um, you know, I recently had my breath kind of taken away um, in, a, in this relationship that I've been working on to forgive this person. And I was, I was moved to tears on how deeply, deeply it, possible it is for me to love and forgive. And it's beyond just me. It's not about me. It's the human capacity to love and forgive. That's what was moving. That we can each do this. That we're just so beautiful human beings. We're capable of so much. And so it is. <laughs> All right, beautiful souls. I'm going to get out of this windy weather and upload the video so I hope it was helpful post in the comments below if you have any ceremonial releasing tips for others to try um, yeah it might be nice to share ideas and yeah all right wishing you lots of love and best wishes on that journey namaste